So the first thing is that opposite sides, opposite sides are parallel. Okay. Which okay. means that the slope, the slopes are the same. Now, one of the things you really want to do in your drawings here is label the segments A, B, C, and D. So we have to show that the slope of A, B is the same as the slope C, D. The slope of B, C is the same as the slope A, A, B. Okay. So what? where that, does the M come from, just slope? That's slope. Yeah, I don't know why M, mountain. I can yeah. tell you why. I don't know. Um, okay. but M is slope. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing, and this one's a little bit more annoying to do, is you have to show that the opposite sides are congruent. Okay. Which means like using the D distance. And D and like B and A. Yeah. Now okay. when they're when they're when they're on the grid, you can just count. Yeah, exactly. But you have to say B C congruent to A D. Do you could you just say like like it's no. just like you counted it on the graph or is that not uh when they're nice like this sure like that's only part of it that's only those two the other two you have to use the distance formula or a triangle thing okay so that's for a parallelogram you'll notice in number two it's for a trapezoid trapezoid's different than a parallelogram there's different sets of rules for that um so okay. Let's proceed here. I'm going to, uh... all right. I want you to find the slope from A to B. When you've graphed it, it's probably easier to use like rise over run. Yeah. What is the slope from A to B? Okay, I'll find that. So I got two for the slope of A to B. Right, good. Now, when you find the slope from the one over here to the right, it's important that you go from left to right with the letters. It's really D to C. Okay. In terms of the formula, it doesn't matter, but make sure you're going in the right direction. Again, okay. I, I would just look at the graph, especially if you got there. It's just up two over one. Yeah. It's also two. So yeah. this one, you can just write out. How? What is the slope from B to C? It's a horizontal line. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Um, Wouldn't it also be two? Nope, it's a horizontal. B to C. Do you, uh, do, should I just like solve it or? Yeah, why don't you use the slope formula? Okay. Yeah, I got two over uh one. Is that correct? Matthew, are you are you on mute right now or yeah, sorry about that. I was looking at you was looking at this. Your instructor didn't uh why did they do that? So I labeled these wrong. Yeah. That's what the issue is. Um Four, three, two, three. Okay, this is uh, yeah, a. There it is. Okay, B. It's like why is this this so wrong? All right, yeah. So that that's that's where we're running into these issues. Okay, um, let me reset here. So the slope from A to D is two. The slope from B to C is two. The slope from D to C is zero. Horizontal <laughs> lines have a have a slope of zero. Oh, okay. Okay. And that's why I was stalling. Because I was like, what's going on? You're giving me a number that's not zero. It's because you I I labeled it wrong. Yeah. So what is the slope from A to B? 
Um, the slope from A to B is uh, um, you can either use the formula or it's a horizontal line. Uh, would it just be zero then? It would also be zero. Yeah. Okay. So now, so this, this is check. This is check. That's the first thing we need to do. The next is the distance between them. Okay. Okay. So the, uh, the distance. Do you need to find can... the slope for all of them? Like each side? Yes. Yes. Okay. So what some students do is they actually just make a table and find all the slopes and all the distances. Okay. All right. So, uh, a, B, C, D, the distance from A to D, okay? Yeah. You can use the distance formula, all right? But there's kind of a shortcut, uh, which I really like here. If you draw a little triangle here, do you remember the Pythagorean theorem? Have you seen that in other classes? Yeah, a little bit of it. I'm not like... Okay, then maybe, maybe we will just stick with you using uh, the distance formula. Okay. So from A to D, the distance formula is 2 minus 1 squared plus 3 minus 1 squared square rooted. Did you get the distance formula in class? Uh, no, we didn't. How are you supposed to do this? We thing? actually, yeah, we did. We did. You're right. Okay. All right. So this is this ends up being one squared plus two squared. So is it like the square root of five? X one, y one, x two, y two, with yeah. The distance yeah. from the, the couple ways you can write it. It's x two minus x one squared plus y two minus y one squared. Where so it's looking at the distance from A to D, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me just get this down really quick. So. Okay. No, All right. So that. now, what is the distance from B to C? Uh, B, B to C. C. Go ahead and use the distance formula to uh, calculate that. Would it be three minus four squared? And then one minus three squared. Yeah. And the order actually doesn't matter because you're squaring it. But yeah, three minus four squared plus one. Squared one. and two what does squared. That end up, yeah. What does that end up becoming? And that becomes. And then do I just add both of the squares up? Yes. Okay. So be four. So six. Is that Dragon? the No. Uh, would it be f four also? Or I'm negative not I'm one sure on how to add up the. Uh, you you square. square first. Negative one squared is one. Negative two squared is four. Yeah. What is one plus four? What? Oh, five. Five. You cannot. It said that what's it? There's an implied parentheses inside here. Like you have to do this first before you take the square. Oh, it was because I didn't do like negative one squared. I just had positive one squared. So that's what got me to six. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So good so far. So then the next thing is to find the distance from B e to C and then the distance from A to B. And you're kind of asking me this earlier. It's like, well, you can just count, you can just use the. You could use the distance formula or you can just count. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which. Okay. All right. We should squ skip part B and do part A. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna do, we're gonna do part A differently. We're just gonna do a. Um, well, we should we should have the graph. Uh, I guess we'll do the graph. 
because the direction the direction does matter here. So you've got to label the points when you um, when you put them on here. So we got P, E, A, and R. Okay. All right. So the what I what I was saying is that you can you you've got to go left to right. So E R R A A P and T P. You've got to find the slope and the distance with all of them. Yeah, like that's kind of your. They they might as well just have you do this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so why don't we start with slope since it's easier? I would recommend counting boxes. I would not, okay. and it, it does, and it doesn't matter, you know, left to right. But let me just get this graph going. Yeah, the graph would I feel like help because it's like yeah. so much stuff. Okay. Uh, what, do you want me to start out with TR? Uh, yeah. Okay. Would T to R slope be three? Okay. And then R to A slope would be one. Okay. Um, A to P slope would be two. How is that two? Uh, just counting the boxes. Yeah, but it's it's rise over run. Oh. And it's also horizontal. Um, would it then would it be negative two? No, I mean so, I okay. Let's back up. How did you get T to R is three? T to R three. I was just. Counting. Was well, that tell a... me, be more specific. I mean, do you just pick I was numbers? Adding from P to R, like up. But they don't. It's not. It doesn't. Like if they were on the grid, you could count. But they're not. It's 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 it, the line is moved it's the, off to the side. So how did you count? How did you get the three? I just I just counted up from T. I just went one, two, three, and then but because like rise over run, and then it goes yeah, right. Okay. Well, Really yeah, sad. so you so that's different. That's three up, one right, which is, is that three. Right? That is correct. Let's do the same thing from R to A. And then R to A, you go up one, and then you go right one, so that'd be one. Now from A to P, how much do you go up? You don't go up any. So what numbers? What are the side? Nothing. Zero. Over okay. two. What is zero over two? Two. Or zero. Sorry. Yes. Okay, now T to P, it's very it's really important that you go left to right. That's why this graph helps. Okay, um, what is what is T to P? It would be one, two, three. Uh would be four. Or no. It's a fraction. What what is the fraction? Um and... Would it be four over four? Okay, what does that become? One. That's one. All right, very good. Now, for the distance formula, you can do your work off to the side if yeah. you want. Um, but do uh, start with E to R, I guess. That, yeah, that makes the most sense. Go ahead and start with that one, please. Okay. I uh, set it up as negative two minus 
negative one squared is zero minus three squared. Is that correct? You want t to r first? Yeah. Did I not label these right? Um, yeah, it's it's minus two minus a minus one though. Yeah, yeah. That's the okay. Negative. Yeah, yeah. That that does work. So okay. what is it? It becomes the square root of what number? Um, it becomes. Would it become negative one squared and three and squared? It is, but when you make sure you're you're however you're writing it, you're showing that it's inside parentheses that's squared. Okay. Okay, got it. And then that would add up to negative one squared is negative one, three squared is six. So no, would you, it, 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 it's square. Hang on, hang on. Before you say anything else, five squared means five times five. Negative oh. three squared means negative three times negative three. Whenever you square, it's always positive also. Got it. Okay. So um, it would be negative one or no, sorry, sorry. Uh, would it be eight? No. What is three squared? Wait, what? What is three squared? Three squared is nine, right? Okay. Squares always return a positive. Uh, negative one squared means negative one times negative one. Which is negative one, right? No, it's positive one. Oh, positive. Always returns a positive. Okay, so. okay, so. What does that become? 10. Square root of 10. Okay. And even when you add it up, you have to add the square root even when you get like your final answer. In this case, because it doesn't, you don't know the square root of 10, you have to leave it that way. It's unfriendly. Okay. All right. Do uh, RA? Yeah. Um, would that be negative two is the final answer? Think about what you just said. You just said the distance is negative. Oh, so positive two. Well, it's it's not that simple. I mean, you can't just say, oh, well, my answer must be, there's a sign error, but it, it, it's, it, it's not that, it's not uh, as simple as that. So from uh, R to A, it's... Um, Minus one minus zero squared. What does that become? Oh, uh, that just becomes negative one squared. Yeah. Now, if you don't put it in parentheses, which I, yeah, I did put it in parentheses for that. Okay. So then this becomes positive one. Yeah. Okay. And what is three minus four? Negative one squared. So same thing. Which what is that? I did one plus one. So positive two squared yes square root of two okay square root of two yeah all right uh so a to p is two you can just count how about t to p please okay p to
Uh, I got 16 squared. I, I think you mean you've got you got 16 plus 16, square root of 16 plus 16. Yeah. Which is the square root of 32. Yeah. Okay. So this this table is really important, okay? Because because everything we can everything you might want to know about whether a trap it is or isn't a trapezoid comes from this table. For a trapezoid, what you need is one set of parallel sides. Okay. And you have that because the two slopes are the same. So you actually didn't need the distance, but we just did that to get some more practice uh, with it. Okay. All right. That is going to do it for us for today.